not feeling well. You sick, got a little cold, just can't get started. Go to your closet and put this baby on. <laughs> when you look in the mirror and you see what you look like in this Hall of Fame jacket, you will feel so much better. Well, Floyd Little knows how that feels, and now a few more Broncos will. Welcome to AutoNation All Access. I'm Romy Bean. Super Bowl weekend certainly was super for Broncos country. Owner Pat Bolin and former cornerback Champ Bailey will be enshrined in the Pro Football Hall of Fame this year, making the class of 2019 the first ever to include multiple Broncos. Well, Michael Spencer joins us now from Atlanta. And Michael, I don't know about you, but I have been waiting a long time to say this one's for Pat. And Romy, that is exactly what the six of the seven Bolin children who were here in Atlanta and were in that hotel room yesterday, that's exactly what they said after they got the knock from Hall of Fame President David Baker. You know, that knock and the official announcement that Pat Bolin will be enshrined into the Hall of Fame brought a lot of excitement and a lot of relief, not just for the Bolin children, but for all of Broncos country. Hey, congratulations, guys. On behalf of all of us who love the game, okay, we are honored to tell you that your father is going to live in Canton, Ohio, as an enshrinee there forever. Saturday night in Atlanta, the Broncos organization picked up yet another victory. We made it. We're, we're here finally, and we're not going anywhere now. He's up there for forever. We well, did it! He was a wonderful uh, human being. Uh, he was always around, but never meddled, let people do their work. His, you know, like I said, how many Super Bowls he took the Broncos to, the impact he's had on the league. Uh, it's, it's just, it's long overdue. I love you, Pat! For 35 years, Pat Bowen has shepherded one of the winningest franchises in all of sports, making his enshrinement into the Hall of Fame a moment to celebrate for anyone who's ever worn orange and blue. Pat has uh, created something in Denver that is well loved by all the fans. Uh, he's done things in Denver as a contributor and as a, a giver, philanthropist, that he's unlike a lot of owners. And anyone who's had a relationship with him, they can, you know, I'm sure they'll say the same thing, just the person that he is, um, you know, the way he treated people, the way he led, uh, just, just second to none. He always had a relationship with the players. It wasn't, well, all the management people upstairs, all the players are down at the bottom floor on, this, on the first floor, and we had to keep the two separated. In Denver, it was a family. I think one thing that stood out about him every time you talked to him is how much he cared about us. And then on top of that, how competitive he was. He wouldn't say a lot, but his, his presence was felt always. And how much he wanted to win, he wanted to do it for him. Just to see him get the recognition of, of what he deserves and to be put on that platform in the Hall of Fame, it's amazing, man. His legacy will live on. And He's a great man and a, and a great owner. Romy, I had the chance to talk to Patrick Bolin III, the oldest of Pat's sons, and he said, I know a lot of people think my dad will not remember this. He said, but I promise you that he will, and this will live on in his heart and his mind forever. This is obviously a big, big moment for that entire family and for all of Broncos country. Well, and Michael, we know if Pat was there, he would say, hey, where I need some more of my players in, though, right? Steve Atwater, John Lynch, not getting the nod. What was the reaction to that? Well, everyone was saying that, and they were all saying if Pat were here, he would be championing for more Broncos to go into the Hall of Fame. Champ and Pat going to be the sixth and seventh representatives from this organization to have their bus in Canton. But everybody in that room last night, the Bowling children, Joe Ellis, even Champ Bailey, all saying, hey, look, we need more. That is what Pat would want. And they hope to continue championing that for his legacy to continue as well. All right, well, the good thing is we're going to get plenty more of Michael Spencer. We'll hear from him in the next segment about the game that went on today. And with Mr. B and Champ going to Canton, the Broncos Hall of Famer total is up to seven. And that is far too few for an organization with the second most Super Bowl appearances in league history. Time now for Arby's Fan Talk, where you, the fan, get to sound off. Brought to you by Arby's. We have the meats. It might be hard to pick just one for tonight's Arby's Fan Talk. Who should the next Denver Bronco immortalized in the Hall of Fame be? Well, the overwhelming favorite in Broncos country is Steve Atwater. 
never been a safety like him, and there's no one like him today. He should have been in long ago. Now, another Broncos defender that should already be in. Points out 2,000 tackles in 10 years. Yeah, Paul, I think enough said with that one. And of course, as much as we all love Champ Bailey, it's crazy he's the first Broncos defender to make it in. Broncos country's unified on who should don gold jackets next. Atwater, Mecklenburg, an honorary mention for Randy Gratishar. Now, the NFL introduced the class of 2019 before today's big game between the Patriots and the Rams, and it was the most interesting thing that happened on the field, honestly, for most of the day.